All right, in this video, what I wanna do is cover three different ways that we can understand or identify if we have a factor of a polynomial. So in this example, we have x plus two is our expression, and we wanna know, is that a factor of the polynomial x cubed plus two x squared plus three x plus six? So to be able to do that, we need to understand exactly what factors are. A lot of times we use the words like factors are the building blocks of a polynomial, or factors evenly divide into another number. So let's go ahead and think about it in terms of numbers, then we'll go ahead in terms of variables, and then we'll see how we can apply this in terms of polynomials. So my favorite example that I always like to talk about with my students is four times two is equal to eight. Now, four times two are examples of factors of eight because four times two is equal to eight. And what's important about this is we can also rewrite this expression of two is equal to an eight times four. Right? Since four is a factor, it evenly divides an eight two times. And since we know four evenly divides an eight two times, we can also rewrite it as a four times two is equal to eight. Now, if we just wanted to think about this in terms of some variables, I could say a times b is equal to c, and I could say a is equal to a c divided by b, or you could say that b is equal to c divided by a. It doesn't really matter, right? But it's important that we understand our factors evenly divide into our value and our two factors multiplied together are gonna give us that value. However, that's not always the only way that we, you know, kind of look at, you know, factors. One time when we want to identify factors, let me start with that, especially when we're first learning about factors of numbers, we look at creating a factor tree. Now I'm not gonna create a factor tree, but I am going to go ahead and create and say, well, what are the factors of eight, right? Because we identified four times two, but is that the only two numbers that multiplied to give me eight? And no, the other two numbers are going to be an eight and a one. So the reason why I bring this up is because if I have a polynomial, x cubed plus two x squared plus three, x plus six. I said I wanted to give you three different ways that we can identify if x plus two is a factor. So the first way I want to go with is like we what we did over here, right? When we first learned about factors and numbers, we learned about breaking a number apart into its factors. So why don't we take this polynomial and break it apart into its factors? That is if it is factorable. So what that means is the first way we're going to identify if x plus two is a factor of this polynomial is to simply factor it. And I know not all of the time, ladies and gentlemen, are you gonna have polynomials that are factorable, but the more often than not, a lot of times you will. And the more practice you get with factoring, the better, faster, and easier it is for you to choose this option. Because again, the first thing I recognize when looking at this polynomial is that I have four terms. Whenever I think about factoring with four terms, I immediately think of using the grouping technique, which basically is going to tell me I'm going to group the first two terms and group the last two terms. Now, what I'm simply gonna do is look into factoring out the greatest common factor of each of these expressions. You can see in this first two terms, they both share a x squared, right? That's the largest term that I can factor out of both of my terms, x cubed and two x squared. So when I factor out an x squared, I'm being left with a x plus two. Now, the goal of factoring by grouping is I want to be able to factor, whatever I factor out of here, I want to be able to get this exact same expression, x plus two. So I'm thinking, well, what do they have in common first? And then can I make sure that it's going to be factored out to give me an x plus two? Well, thanks for this problem. I didn't try to create anything too confusing. If I factor out a three, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna have a x plus two left over in the parentheses. Now notice what's in the parentheses of both of these terms. Again, these expressions are separated by addition. So I can create this as one term and this is another term. You can see that they both share an x plus two. So I can rewrite this as a x plus two times what's over left over, which is an x squared plus three. Now, I want you guys to understand something. All factoring is, right, is rewriting something as a product. If I take the number eight and rewrite it as four times two, I didn't change the value, right? I just rewrote eight as a product. When we're factoring polynomials, all I'm doing is I'm taking this expression and rewriting it as a product. I'm not changing the value of this expression. I'm not changing the value of the expression. I'm just rewriting it as a product. And you can see that X plus two shows up there. So X plus two is indeed a factor via factoring. Now, another one that comes into what we talked about with the division. Student C division, they say, oh, well, once you learn how to divide polynomials, I can go ahead and do division. Now, most students don't simply say, I wanna go ahead and do long division. Most of them go right into synthetic division. And for this problem, synthetic division wouldn't be too bad. Remember, when you have something as your divisor, you're simply gonna go and set your divisor equal to zero and solve for x to be able to get your value k. So in this case, I have an x plus two is equal to zero, x equals a negative two. So that is going to be the outside of my synthetic division box. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the coefficient of each and every one of my terms, and I'm gonna go and list them up there. So if there's no coefficient, we can say that's gonna be a one. So I have a one, 
two, three, and six. And again, synthetic division is a way for us to divide x plus two into this, right? If we can divide four into eight and we get our value or we get something with no remainder, then we know that x plus two evenly divides into that polynomial. So what we're doing by synthetic division is dividing x plus two into this polynomial. So again, the synthetic division algorithm, bring down the one, one times negative two is negative two, two plus negative two is zero. So you add on the vertical, multiply on the diagonal. Zero times negative two is going to be zero. Three plus zero is going to be a three. Three times negative two is a negative six. Therefore, we get a zero, which is our remainder. So therefore, that's a remainder, our constant, sorry, our linear and our quadratic. So again, we get a x squared plus three is going to be the other binomial that we'll multiply by to an x minus two. So again, in here, since we have a remainder of zero, we know, ladies and gentlemen, that we have a factor. So again, if you want to identify something as a factor, just simply apply synthetic division. Now, last but not least, I'm running out of some space, but it's going to be using the factor theorem. And the factor theorem is great. It's awesome. And it's so fast and easy. If you have a function like f of x equals dot, 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 and we want to be able to know if we have a binomial in the form of, let's say, x plus k, if we simply need to be able to, and this x plus k is going to be your factor, right? So it's x plus, x plus or minus some number. All we simply need to know, if this is going to be a factor, we're going to plug in f of opposite of k, just like we did over in here. Well, actually, sorry, I actually wrote that wrong. That should be a negative x. So if I write in, if I plug in f of k and I get zero, then what that tells me is I have a factor, okay? So again, we already found, so in this case, we could rewrite this as a x minus a negative two, right? So we could say my k is equal to a negative two. So now let's go ahead and plug in negative two into this function and see if we get the value of zero. If we get the value of zero, then we know that x plus two, the factor, is going to be your zero. So again, just like you did with synthetic division, you take your factor set equal to zero, that is now going to be your value of k. If you want to see it in the notation that I wrote up here, then just rewrite it as x minus negative two. Since it was x minus negative two is the same thing as x plus two, but you can see it's rewritten in the correct notation there. In the form of not wanting to erase anything off this board, I'm just going to go and do everything over here. So if I wrote in f of negative two, let's see, that'd give me a negative two to the third power plus a two times negative two squared, plus a three times negative two plus six. All right, so negative two raised to the third power is going to be a negative eight. Negative two squared is gonna be a positive four. Four times two is going to be a positive eight. Three times negative two is gonna be negative six plus six. Ladies and gentlemen, look at that, I got zero. So since when I plug in my value of k, I know that the factor of x minus k is going to be your factor, and boom, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Three ways you can identify if you have a factor of a polynomial. Hope that was helpful.